In this problem, we have a power series, and we're being asked to find the interval of convergence. So to do that, we're going to use the ratio test. So to start with the ratio test, you start by taking the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. And we have one of three possible outcomes when we use the ratio test. The first is if the result is less than one. In this case, the series will converge. The second is if the result is greater than one. In this case, the series will diverge. The third is if the result is equal to one. In this case, there is no information. Okay, so this is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity. So now we're going to replace all of the n's with m plus 1. That's how we'll evaluate a sub n plus 1. So this here that you see is already a sub n. So we'll replace all the n's with m plus 1's. So we have n plus 1 factorial times x to the n plus 1 over and on the bottom, we have 2 times m plus 1 factorial. So it'll look like this. But that really becomes 2n plus 2, because you have to distribute the 2 to the n plus 1. So this is now 2n plus 2 factorial. We still have our absolute value. Now, instead of dividing by a sub n, what we'll do to make our lives easier is we'll multiply by the reciprocal of a sub n. So times, so then you just flip it. So this is parentheses 2n factorial over and then n factorial times x to the n. So now there is some simplification that should occur. In particular, we should be able to find um, some cancellation between the factorials. Let's focus on each one individually. So let's start with m plus 1 factorial. I'll do it up here. So I have m plus 1 factorial up top, and we also have an n factorial on the bottom. So m plus 1 factorial is just m plus 1, and then it's n, and then n minus 1. So in particular, m plus 1 factorial is m plus 1 times n factorial. And the reason is you just keep subtracting 1. So you start with n plus 1, then you go to n, then you go to n minus 1, etc., all the way until you get to 1. But all of this stuff here is n factorial. That's what's on the bottom. And that will cancel it with the numerator. So we have n plus 1. So that's the first thing. So let's go ahead and write the limit sign down again and write down the absolute value. And then just go ahead and make note that We've done that part. You know, we've we've simplified. You know, m plus one. Okay, now let's deal with maybe um, the x's because that's the next thing we see here. So x to the m plus one over x to the n. This is a little bit easier to simplify. This is equal to x to the n times x to the one. Properties of exponents say that when you multiply something and the bases are the same, you actually have to add the exponents. On the bottom, we have x to the n. These cancel, and so we're left with simply x. So this is x. Now let's deal with the last factorial. It's 2n factorial over, and then we have 2n plus 2 factorial. So 2n plus 2 factorial. And we're going to do exactly the same thing we did before. We're going to keep the top the same this time. And on the bottom, we'll just keep subtracting 1. So we start with 2n plus 2. Subtract 1, you get 2n plus 1. And then if you subtract 1, you get 2n, and then 2n minus 1. So the rest of it is just 2n factorial. So these cancel, and so we're left with 1 over 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1. So on the bottom here, we simply have 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1. And we have our absolute value. At this point, um, I suppose we could factor out, um, it looks like we can factor out a 2 here on the bottom. It's not necessary to do it, but let's go ahead and do it. 
Okay, I think we can just go to the answer and figure out the question, but let's go ahead and do that extra step. So this is m plus one times x, and you can pull out a two there. That's kind of cool. So it's kind of a neat thing to happen. It's not really going to affect the problem or the answer in any way, though. So this cancels. This is limit. This then goes to infinity. And the reason I say that is because this limit, it's going to be zero, right? No matter what, um, you're going to get... Uh, you're going to get zero. Let me see if I did that right. 2, 2m plus 1, 2, 2m plus 1. Yep. So this limit is zero because uh, as n approaches infinity, the bottom gets faster than the top. In fact, the top is just x. This is equal to zero, which is less than 1. So um, it converges by the ratio test. And in particular, this is always true, right? Zero is less than 1. So this is true for any x. Right, so, and that's what we want for convergence. Remember, the ratio test says that if it's less than one, we have convergence. So um, it's true for any x. So this converges for all x, for every single value of x. So the interval of convergence in this problem is all real numbers or negative infinity to infinity. And that would be the final answer, right? No matter what x is, uh, this result will always be less than 1 because this limit is always going to be 0. I hope this video has been helpful.